Hello YouTube, my name is Mike and this is X-Ray Tech. Now, the card I'm reviewing today is NVIDIA's 8800 GTS. This card launched in February of 2007 and it features NVIDIA's 65 nanometer manufacturing process. This card had all of 96 stream processors, and in the case of the specific card I have for you today, a whopping 320 megabytes of RAM. This card would have been right at home, achieving great frame rates and popular titles at its release such as Prey, The Elder Scrolls Oblivion, Need for Speed Carbon, and the still popular World of Warcraft. Now, the question I'm posing today, and that I hope to answer for you in this video, is what can this card do today? To test this out, I've prepared a test bench featuring a quad-core AMD Athlon 2 X4 750K an FM2 Plus processor with 8GB of DDR3 memory that should be more than a match for the 8800 GTS. All benchmarks were taken at 1080p with the goal of achieving a smooth and playable experience. First up is Left 4 Dead 2, Valve's co-op zombie shoot-em-up from November of 2009. Played at a mix of high and very high settings and with anti-aliasing off, this card held up admirably. It achieved a smooth 63fps average with a 1% low of 35. I found this experience to be extremely playable. Please excuse the mods. Second on our list is Star Wars Battlefront 2, a 2005 title that captures large-scale ground and space battles from the Star Wars universe. This game is making a comeback through a very active modding community, something worth checking out. Also worthy of note is the fact that multiplayer games are still supported through Steam. On max settings we achieved an average of 35 FPS with a 1% low of 27. While this seems bad, the experience was surprisingly smooth, so I didn't feel the need to tweak any settings. The Elder Scrolls Oblivion is next in our benchmarks, and for many, a very nostalgic choice. The 8800 GTS destroyed this game, achieving an average of 176 frames per second, with very infrequent drops to 43 FPS. This game was my first RPG, and exploring Tamriel again brought back memories as well as a realization that I was probably due for another playthrough. There's also a huge modding scene for this game, with everything from quests to complete overhauls, transforming it into almost another game entirely. Regardless, the 8800 GTS has more than enough juice to power you through a sweet, sweet nostalgia-fueled romp through an old, but still fun, stomping ground. Released in October of 2010, Fallout New Vegas is the fourth major release in the Fallout series, and next in our lineup of benchmarks. This game is set in the western United States following a total nuclear apocalypse. This retro western themed survival game still holds up well today, and a release three and a half years after the 8800 GTS wasn't enough to hold our little card back. The medium preset with anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering off returned an average of 58 FPS and 1% lows of 30 FPS. The game was highly playable and, like Oblivion, has a very active modding community to help inject variety and add to the fun. Borderlands the pre-sequel is up next, and this game was released in 2014, uh, an astonishing seven and a half years after the 8800 GTS, and this card steps right up to the plate in this popular co-op shooter. Notable for its cel-shaded art style and a very addicting weapon and loot system, Borderlands is a blast, especially with friends. If you haven't played it, be prepared for some dark humor. On the medium preset, the 8800 GTS returned an average of 39 FPS, with lows dipping as far as 25 FPS. Once again, this produced a smooth and enjoyable experience, and I didn't feel the need to adjust settings any further. Now, the penultimate choice in our lineup is very much more recent, and a game that surprises me even more than Borderlands and how forgiving it is to old, obsolete hardware. Paladins is a team-based shooter that shamelessly draws its inspiration from Overwatch, to the extent that its laughably similar characters end up being just as endearing as the ones they try to imitate. Can anyone spot the uh, not Reinhardt? This game plays exceptionally well, and best of all, it's free. On the high preset, I was rewarded with an average of 63 FPS and a 1% low of 43. Gameplay was smooth, and while I'm not particularly skilled, I can't blame it on the graphics card. So, 
finally, we come to our last title, literally one of the most popular games in the world, League of Legends. This game is the MOBA of MOBAs, incredibly difficult to master, but conversely easy on bad hardware. On the high preset, we got a very impressive 75 FPS, with a 1% load down at 52. Not only was this experience smooth and enjoyable, but if I had any skill whatsoever, it would have been downright competitive. It's a shame you have to watch even a little of my gameplay with Ash, but no budget GPU review would be complete without League in it, and it makes another solid win for the 8800 GTS. In total, at $20, if you really needed a super budget graphics card or your children want their first PC, maybe this is it. Anyway, leave likes, dislikes, comments all down below. This has been X-Ray Tech.